Okay, in this video I'm going to be covering um, a couple of new parts here that are going to go into this build. This is the um, uh, Airblade Intrepid V2 5 inch frame. I have this, had this frame for a while. I have a review video on this already. And I'll put a link down in the description to that. This is the upcoming build, but this is just an overview on two parts that are going to go into it. This uh, T-Motor F4 flight controller. Cover that here in a second. And then also this new uh, 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter from FXT. It's called the Ares. And that's what is here. So we'll cover this one second. Set this to the side. Look at the flight controller first. And this actually is it's called the uh, T-Motor F4 Premium flight controller. I think that's what it's official name is yeah premium flight controller pretty generic f4 flight controller um yeah it does not come with an mp6000 like a lot of people would expect um it only comes with a 32k gyro it's the icm uh, 2602 gyro i believe that's that part right there so um obviously you don't have to go 32k if you don't want to but it, you can if you feel like i think if you go to the flight four, i think the max is like 16k so it's a pretty standard 30 by 30 board here. Uh, has these silicon silicone rubber grommets here for vibration dampening. This one comes with six UARTs and everything is nicely labeled on the board. So let me just kind of go over all the connections here for you. Uh, I'll start off here at the top. We have the camera connections here. So you have your negative positive camera and camera control wire and then you have these solder bridges here so the two on the left so you basically have to solder uh, two on the left here for VBAT or the two on the right for five volts so you have to basically solder the one on the right to the middle or the one on the left to the middle and if you bridge the on two on the left you'll, um, the positive out here will be VBAT power to the camera and if you solder the bridge the two on the right then the positive will be five volts you got the same situation I'm here for the video transmitter two on the left for VBAT, two on the right for five volts, and that would be on this positive uh, pin right here. And you can see all these uh, solder points have through holes, which is kind of nice, even though they're a little on the small side. You have a video um, out to the video transmitter here on this pin, and then TX2 is your smart audio to the video transmitter, so that's gonna be on UART2, and then you have your ground there. Okay, so here on the left side of the board, you have your connections for GPS is what is recommended in their wiring diagram. So here is uh, UART6, so you have T6 and R6, five volts in ground. And then you have your S, uh, CL and SDA connections here if you happen to have a compass. Uh, this here, these two connections are E5 and E6. I believe those are for motor outputs five and six if you want to run a hexacopter. And then your UR4 connections here, T4 and R4 are here over on this side. Now, uh, UR4 or RX4 here is actually, uh, I think, dedicated to ESC telemetry. So if you have over here, you have RX4 on this uh, pin connector for your 4 in 1 ESC. So if you are using an ESC that is using ESC telemetry, or if you're using the this pin here for ESC telemetry then of course then this UART will be occupied you can't have them using for two different things but if you're not using the RX4 here then you could use the TX4 and RX4 for some other um, peripheral if you want to and so those are broken out over there as well okay so over here on the uh, right side of the boards so I guess the arrow pointing this way it's forwards so this would be the right side you got UARTs uh, 3 so T3 R3 here and UART 5, T5, R5 there, RSSI, got ground 5 volts, 3.3 volts, and I believe TE is for telemetry, and then PPM is for the, if you have a PPM receiver. So this is going to be mainly for your different types of receivers here, 3.3 volts for your spectrum receivers. Um, obviously you have all these different UARTs here if you want to have some a wire up, say for your crossfire. TBS Nano, for example, RSSI is here, and then if you have a smart port, uh, telemetry receiver, then you can uh, connect up uh, smart port telemetry here. But I believe this one here is going to be UART1 or T, uh, TX1 because that's not, I don't see that broken out anywhere else in the board. And that's for your smart port telemetry receivers. Okay, so here on the bottom, you have your LED and buzzer connections. So LED, buzzer, negative, 5 volts, and ground. And then these here correspond to these 
10 pins over here. And it's not labeled on this side of the board, so if you don't want to use the pin connector, you could do a direct solder to your 400 EC, which is nice, they, they give you that option, but it's um, actually labeled on the underside of the board here. So uh, you have your RX4 for ESC telemetry, current sensor, uh, motor outputs one, two, three, and four, and then you have plus and minus, and that is going to be your VBAT and your ground. This board does go two up to eight S. I think that's 33.6 volts, and then of course you have also your other connections here labeled on the bottom as well, which is kind of nice. Got your OC chip over here and your F4 processor, and then on the top side of the board you've got your 5 volt regulator, I believe that's this one right here, 5 volts and 2 amps, and you have a black box chip here, it's a 16 megabyte black box chip, um, and I believe this one has an option for a barometer, which will be right here, but this one is not, actually you can see it's not, not installed, and I think that there is an option for another version, perhaps with an MPU 6000, I think that would go here, which is blank, that, that looks like about the size of an MPU 6000 gyro, so this particular version only comes with the 32K gyro. Okay, so in addition to the flight control, you do get these wiring connections here. And it's you know, mainly for this 10-pin uh, connector here. They do give you this one here, which I believe is going to work with the um, F55A 4-in-1 ESC. I don't actually have that to confirm that, but I believe this is what the wiring uh, output is for that one. Now, which is nice is about this one is that they do offer another connector here when these are these connectors here are not connected to anything but they offer the different uh, alternative pin connections here so you have a 10 pin connector I believe that's uh, I don't know exactly the number of pins or I think it's a seven and then a five so they do, do give you some different options here depending upon what kind of ESC form you see you're using and then you just have to uh, connect up the proper wires for your particular ESC in the right order. So I'm going to plug this in. So this obviously goes into the flight controller and you can see how the colors line up here. So the blue one there is going to be your RX4 ESC telemetry. The yellow is current sensor. You have your four white motor output wires and then NC is actually, I think blue means no connection. And then uh, the red wire, so the second red wire is going to be the plus that is going to be VBAT, and then you have two grounds. So if you look at the other connector that's provided, I think it's going to be this one here. Let me plug that in. And this is the one I believe is going to go to the uh, F55A uh, 4 one ac You can see that the one where it says NC or no connection, that, that wire is actually missing on this one, if you happen to use the, the connector here. Now I am using this fly color 60 amp X cross 4 in 1 EC and it does have a similar output here so it's got ground ground VBAT 5 volts you got your 4 3 2 1 motor outputs current sensor and the EC telemetry and it actually does this this is this is the wiring limit comes with the X cross it's kind of long and it does seem to match up pretty well here. So we have your blue wire at the bottom for easy telemetry. The white wire is going to be current sensor. You've got your green, yellow, blue, and white for your motor outputs. And then you have two reds and two blacks there. So I suppose since NC doesn't really do anything, and that corresponds to five volts on the fly collar, you can just remove this red wire right there. And that would be totally fine. What I'm probably going to do is just use the this is actually a little bit shorter so I don't need I don't need a really long one and just plug in the connections I need here into this 10 pin connector and then remove one of the red wires there for the no connection to the flight control because it's not needed the 5 volts is not going to do anything and just do that and then plug that into the flight control and that that should give me you know which is nice because then uh, you know, if your flight, if your EC is a different wire order, you can just plug the wires in to this connector in the correct order for your particular EC. Obviously, you can have to consult the documentation on your EC, but then yeah, you can you know actually match it up exactly right and not have to do any soldering. But for example, if you have an EC that you can't figure out how to 
get the connectors to work. You can just simply, a lot of times the ESCs will come with a connector that um, has beer wires. So here's the actually the other connector that comes with the 4 and one ESC. You can see here it has a different connector on this side with some beer wires over here. You could just cut this off and then directly solder the wires here to the flex drawer. So if you don't want to use the connector, that's always an option if you just want to cut off the wires and directly solder the wires directly there. So yeah, a lot of different ways you can do that and I like the fact that they offer this connector here without it actually connected into the plastic so you can adjust the wire order for whatever parts you have. I wish more manufacturers would do that. It's a nice option. I don't see that very often in a lot of flight controllers that they provide those parts so that you can actually customize the connections for whatever EC you happen to have. Okay, so we'll take a look at the uh, this uh, video transmitter. It's a one watt video transmitter. It's from FXT. It's called the Aries. Pretty nice looking uh, heat sink here. And it's got an MMCX connector. It does come with a pigtail. And it is, it looks like it's, it's an SMA pigtail. One button operation here with six LEDs, uh, three red, three blue. And uh, it's kind of, as you know, with a lot of these one button operations, it's like uh, obviously short presses and then long presses and longer presses to go through the diff cycle of the different um, channel, band, and power adjustments. Yeah, I'm not going to go through that because this has smart audio and I would recommend using that. This, These are always a pain to figure out and figure out what channel you're on and stuff. But this has a smart audio wire. You can solder that directly to you. You are on the flight controller, very convenient and going to be way easier to use on your transmitter versus these lights and the button. So the video transmitter is uh, goes up to one watt and does go all the way down to pit mode, which is uh, zero, or and then everything in between, 25, 200, 500, etc. The total number of channels is 37 channels. There's like three channels out of the 40 that are. I guess um, restricted or they're not legal, so they're they're not available to you. And I, I don't know if there's any way to unlock those if you happen to want to use those. There's not any instructions on how to do that. So maximum 37 channels. Now this does come with uh, this uh, micro connector on the bottom. Not a huge fan of these. I wish they were solder points here instead. Now this, what's interesting about this is this is actually using the smart gesture feature that I um, showed in another video, and I'll link that video down in the description because uh, I'm not sure if it on this will only work with FXT cameras. So this is the camera that supposedly will work with that feature. It's um, So they basically have a pin for OSD, and they have another pin for camera control, but it's not Betaflight camera control. It's camera control via the smart gesture feature where you basically, you put your hand in front of the camera and then you can change your channel, Bands and power and all those settings uh, via gestures. Uh, you, as you can see, there's no connection to a flight controller here. So um, you know, you, uh, you basically what you have in terms of connections here is just you know, over on the right side of here. You have your power, so it's seven to twenty-eight volts to power up the video transmitter. That's these two connections here, and then you have your white wire here. That's your smart audio. And that's going to go to your flight controller. So that's there's three on the right, and then the next four connections here, they have your blue wire, that's your camera control or your smart gesture. You have your yellow, which is video, and the ground is black, and then the red is five volts. And that goes to this end over here. And this is a, looks like a five, yeah, it's a five pin connector, which obviously works with this camera here. This is the only camera I have that actually uh, uses the smart gesture feature. So I'm not sure if this will work with any other cameras. I haven't had any information or confirmation either way if it'll work with another brand or not. But you can, of course, use the joystick controller that comes with the camera. And that, as you can see, is going to be the blue wire right there. Not the, not the one on the top, that's control. And then that's the second blue wire is for OSD, which is going to be this one. So you can you, you can obviously change your camera settings through standard, it's the standard joystick controller, of course. But then that second blue wire is that smart gesture feature, and that goes to the video transmitter.
here. So that's somehow there's some intelligence going on here where it's looking at light changes in front of the camera when you first turn it on. That's built into this video transmitter. Um, and again, I'll refer you to the video where I had this. It's called the Smart Gesture Box. It's basically the camera and the video transmitter together uh, that, that had this feature. But now this feature is built into this video transmitter and I'm going to give it a go on this particular camera. This is just a micro camera. Kind of like a Predator. I did a review on this one as well. So yeah, check out that video if you want to see how that feature works. I'm not going to be I'm demonstrating it in this video. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys are going to ask for the power meter readings on this guy. And uh, as I mentioned in previous videos, I'm probably not going to be doing that anymore because the, 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 I guess there's a lot of controversy with the power meter and con inconsistent results. And yeah, as you know, um, I think there was a video that Barbell did on a TBS product where it was consistently lower than what was advertised. And I don't, I don't think any, I don't think anyone else is doing uh, those results anymore. So I'm not going to be testing that on this guy here because I already know that on, at least on my meter the results have been kind of all over the place. So uh, I don't think that doing that test is going to be all that meaningful. Uh, whether or not this will do, do truly one watt and how far you can go with that, I um, I would never know because I'm never going to fly that far away. Probably going to uh, do a maximum test on 200, maybe 600 milliwatts at the best and see what the video quality is like. In a lot of places I fly to, like even far away, like, uh, you know, a kilometer, I can go a kilometer on 25 milliwatts, you know. So it's more of the how good the video transmitter is at that power setting um, and also the kind of antennas you have in the RF environment you're flying in. Um, yeah, more power isn't always necessarily better. And if you are looking to go super long range with this one, you know, 10 miles or whatever, yeah, this, this, uh, I'm not going to be testing that in this video. So, uh, sorry to disappoint you that if you're looking for that, uh, that's not going to be in any of my videos, uh, ever. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this video short here. This is a super, really super long video just to go do an overview on these two parts. This is going to go into the, uh, Intrepid V2 build along with the Flycaller, uh, 4 in 1 EC. I haven't decided on the motors yet. Probably, I'm probably going to do a 6S setup on this one here. So yeah, stay tuned for this video. I'm going to be putting this together pretty soon, so that one should be coming out not too long for now. So hope you find the video helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.